Good morning. And uh, thank you for your interest in our research. In the following hour, we will present how to attack an NTP server with fake timing signals. During this presentation, we will discuss the NTP server, its strata model, the reference clock, how to forge fake timing signals, and how to attack an NTP server. Normally, we can set an NTP server for our computer to synchronize time automatically. Sometimes, our mobile phones also get its time from an NTP server. This type of NTP server is associated with our daily level. NTP servers are also widely used in private networks, such as power grids and railways. For example, power grids have to synchronize their automatic equipment in less than 10 milliseconds. As we know, our computer or phone can get its time from an NP server. But how does the NP server get its time? Well, according to the NTP protocol, stratum levels define the distance from the computer to the reference clock. A reference clock is a stratum zero device that is accurate and has little or no delay associated with it. Stratum zero device cannot be used on the network. Instead, they are directly connected to a stratum one NTP server. A stratum one NTP server acts as the primary time net time server. It gets its time from a reference clock namely stratum zero device. A stream a stratum two server is connected to a stratum one server over a network path. Thus a stratum two server gets its time by sending NTP packet requests from my Stratum 2 server. And so a Stratum 3 server gets its time from my Stratum 2 server, and so on. So the original time source is the reference clock. In this presentation, we will discuss the reference clock and the Stratum 1 NTP server. Well, as this picture shows, a large amount of NTP servers are deployed with the open source NTP version 4 software. From the newest NTP version 4 source code, we know that NTP version 4 supports almost a four thousand types of reference clock. The most commonly used are the WWB, DCF77, GGY, MSF, and GPS. But why does the Stratum 1 NTP server use 
the radio clock and the GPS as its reference clock. In fact, there are three classes of accurate clock. The atomic clock, GPS, and the radio clock. The atomic clock is very accurate, but expensive. The GPS satellite has a built-in atomic clock and broadcast the time of this atomic clock in its navigation data frame. The timing signal of reference clock is also controlled is also controlled by an atomic clock. So with the broadcast of these wireless timing signals, we can use a low cost receiver to get almost the same accurate time as atomic clock. The radio clock and the GPS have been widely used to build street more and TP server. Well, on the NTP website, there's a list for its supported radio clock and the GPS receiver card. We can connect a receiver card to a computer to build a stream one NTP server very easily. And uh, there are also a large amount of integrated Stratum 1 and TV servers that can be selected for industrial use. Take this product as an example. From its product description, we know that it supports DCF77, MSF, WWAB, and GPS as its reference clock. Now let's talk about how to forge these timing signal. Our aim is to DIY a uniform circuit to transmit all of these radio clock signals. First, let me introduce the signal features. The WW will be timing radio station is operated by the USA, according to its encoding mechanism, it uses different pathways to represent different binary data bits. As this chart shows, if its amplitude is reduced for 800 milliseconds, and then increase by 200 milliseconds. This is a non-date spatial bit, which we call as marker. If its amplitude is reduced for 500 milliseconds, then increase by 500 milliseconds. This is a date bit with the value one, If its amplitude is reduced for 200 milliseconds, then increase by 800 milliseconds. This is a date bit with the value zero. And uh, the WWB timing signal uses a 60 kilohertz carrier. After adding the signal to the carrier with the amplitude shift key modulation, if the input signal is at low level, it transmits with reduced amplitude. And when the input signal reaches high, it transmits with 
for amplitude. The output of these signals represents the date binary data bits marker 1, 0, and 1. It sends one frame at the start of each mint. Each frame consists of 60 bits. If it transmits one bit per second, the frame starts with a marker bit and uh, almost sends a marker bit every 10 mint sec every 10 seconds. To reduce error, each frame contains the means or year, day of year, and the week of day of week. The final bit also is marker. So if the receiver gets to sequential marker bit, it means that a new frame is prepared to be received. Well, the GDY radio station is operated by the Japan. Its encoding mechanism is very similar to the WWB. The difference between them are the different pathways of each bit and the different frame encoding. It also uses a 60 kHz carrier. The DCF77 is operated by Germany. By Germany. In fact, it's also similar as WWB, except it uses a 77.5 kHz carrier. As we mentioned before, the carrier of GDY, WWB, and the MSF are 60 kHz, while the DCF-77 is 7.5 kHz. We want to design a uniform circuit. It's capable of transmitting all the above red clock signals. So we use the DDS module to generate carrier. This DDS module can generate a 0 to 40 megahertz wave. And as you know, there's an open source driver. It can make the whole thing a little easier. The firmware is very simple. Take the GDY as an example. When sending marker bit, it requires sending the carrier 0.2 seconds of for amplitude, followed by 0.8 seconds reduced amplitude. In this case, when it requires you to reduce amplitude, just shut down the DDS module. When sending the bit one, it requires the carrier 0.5 seconds of full amplitude and followed by 0.5 seconds reduced amplitude. Other radio clock signal like WWB, DCF77, also can be implemented with this way. I get this ferret loop stick antenna from my GDY receiver module. In fact, this antenna is used as an inductor while connected with the proper capacity in parallel. It can be used to transmit the 60 kHz carrier. When we want to transmit the 77.5 kHz carrier, just change to another capacitor. 
This is the whole section of the uniform transmitter. We don't use any amplifier here. It's uh, very simple. You also can play with it. If you want to transmit over long distance, just the eight that power amplifier and the big antenna. But uh, be careful of breaking the law. Now the tool to hack a radio clock is prepared. And uh, let how she show you how to forge GPS signal. Me? Oh, uh, thanks to you is introduced to the JDY bird, and uh, apologize to our agent. And <laughs> mm, so, uh, let me introduce how to attack an TPS NTP receiver. So, as you can see, uh, NTP server's clock reference is not just a JDY bird or something else, and uh, uh, mostly we will use the GPS. NTP, uh, TPS signal uh, receiver. So <coughs> uh, we will introduce the TPS time spoofing tech in these ways and uh, in detail. So firstly, we will talk about the most common GPS receivers um, uh, that we will use and we can buy in China. And uh, in order to make you guys uh, understand what's the meaning of the source code we just write, and uh, we will briefly introduce the GPS text principle. And uh, I will generate a real GPS signal to spoof the, our GPS receiver bird that we just bought, we just bought and uh, gonna have a try. And, uh, but uh, in this attempt, we will still have some shortcomings uh, in it and, we, and you cannot uh, ignore them. So we're gonna to introduce how to upgrade our GPS signal generating uh, generating algorithm. Uh, so let's start it. And uh, so here is the GPS receiver that uh, we can buy in China's market. And uh, actually, it's the most common uh, GPS module that we can buy. We can buy. We can buy. So it got uh, a multiply connection, or you can say the interface. Uh, we can fetch the real uh, real time. Uh, from three ways, uh, such as PCIe and the USB or serial port. So, uh, in our situation, and uh, we will use this port to uh, we will use the serial port to get time from this. And uh, so, after after the GPS uh, NTP receiver port, and uh, we now to uh, briefly introduce the GPS tag. So, uh, I don't know how many you guys. Uh, know the detail of the GPS tag, but uh, uh, let me tell you, it's, uh, the principle is really complicated. complicated. So, uh, unfortunately, the, uh, but, it, but it doesn't matter, because I, I don't know whether you guys listened to the presentation of this trick, of this trick yesterday, and, uh, my colleague, uh, and my colleague, the Dr. Huang, and uh, just made a presentation about the LTE downgrade. So, but and he and she's the and she's the one who uh, used to give presentation about how to make a GPS spoof signal last year uh, in DevCon 23. And so, if you guys are really interested in the GPS spoof in details, I suggest you uh, go to the YouTube and take the video. Mm. So uh, here is the thing, and uh, let's. Back, get back to something serious. And here's the two pictures. And uh, the key information in these pictures is uh, now we got a GPS receiver on, on, the, on the ground. And, uh, uh, on the, uh, and in the sky, there is, a lot of, uh, 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 there is a lot of machines that can see, uh, send the signals to the GPS receiver. And uh, what do we do now? What do we now to do is just to generate a bunch of signals uh, in, some, uh, in some real format, and uh, we can uh, so, so met, met, make the GPS receiver uh, think, wow, uh, now where, uh, uh, here is where I am, and uh, what time I'm, I'm in. And uh, so uh, the, the important thing is, is, how we to, uh, is how we generate this signal, or you can say the 
uh, or, or you can say the wave. <coughs> so in the second picture, um, here is the uh, format of the GPS signal wave. Uh, and there is five sub, uh, subframe, and uh, uh, the important thing uh, that uh, in the uh, subframe two and subframe three, uh, there is uh, the information that can tell, tell the GPS receiver uh, where I am, and uh, uh, in each, in the front of the each subframe, and uh, there is some information that can tell the GPS receiver. Uh, now, what the time it is? Um, so uh, the location doesn't matter, but the time is important. And uh, now we can. Uh, here is the, uh, the 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 main algorithm that uh, we use to generate the GPS signal. So firstly, we need to get the. Uh, Informatory the data, and uh, there are two methods: one to uh, download from the NASA's, you know, uh, website, and uh, you can uh, record it. Uh, but uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and I don't mean, uh, yeah, it's recorded. And um, so after you, after that, you can use the open source program. Or GNSSDR to receive the uh, real-time GPS signal and uh, record it and get the fresh data. And uh, so after you get this this data, now you need to do is set the current time and the current location and the current uh, height uh, that uh, that the signal you want to generate. And uh, uh, so maybe you guys. Uh, it's wondering what the what what are these things meaning, but uh, uh, it doesn't matter. It's open source and it's on GitHub. And uh, if you guys are really interested, so you can download it and uh, see uh, uh, and 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 see uh, which uh, uh, which per, uh, parameters is what's what's the real mean of it. Um, <coughs> so uh, let's gonna have a try. Uh, after this. After we after we run this program and uh, we will generate a signal uh, that uh, conclude uh, conclude the uh, the time and uh, the attitude uh, that we want and uh, we put it in SDR or you can uh, or, you, or you can say USRP and uh, we will generate the real sig real uh, GPS signal. So uh, uh, after we run it and uh, the picture higher uh, is. Uh, if if you guys download the uh, the the PDF of it and you can zoom it, and uh, you can see the uh, this is the real time. This is uh, uh, exactly the time that we just uh, uh, generate on uh, on our in our uh, recent code, and uh, so here is the result. The NT server is panicked, and. Uh, as you can see in this, in this third, third line, and it's negative 4,000, uh, it's 4,000 seconds uh, ahead. So uh, why is panicked? Uh, we will introduce later, but uh, 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 we'll introduce later. And, uh, but we will have something more uh, something related to introduce is how uh, to up, 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 update or you can say upgrade the attack algorithm because uh, if you guys really run this MATLAB code that we just use, uh, you will know, you will find out that if you want to generate a GPS signal, it costs so many times about twenty minutes and uh, and we need a lot of uh, storage space, space such as uh, about uh, four gigabits, and uh, it's it's not a real time. And if you want to attack one uh, one GPS uh, one NTP server, and you now to use a laptop, and uh, cost twenty minutes, and uh, got uh, not exactly the time that you want. So uh, we need to up, uh, update it. So uh, in the GPS 
generate an algorithm uh, source code, we will find out where is the TPS time that we use. And uh, so uh, what we need to do is uh, generate a TPS signal and uh, find out where is the TPS time uh, bi binary code is and uh, replace it and uh, re uh, recheck the parity. So it's, the principle is really easy. And uh, what, we, what we need to do is just uh, write a Python um, program and uh, read, uh, read, read the data file and uh, uh, rewrite it. And uh, you know, we put it in the USRP and uh, we play it. And uh, that's, that's all fine. So uh, <coughs> uh, after we introduce the NTP server and uh, uh, no, uh, the the detail of the uh, the detail take of the uh, JDY bird and the GPS uh, receiver, and uh, let's get to uh, let's try to attack a real one uh, NTP server. So uh, uh, let's just make some prototype and uh, uh, try to use it. So we need, what we now to do is to set up an NTP server. And uh, here is the detail, uh, here is the key point uh, uh, of the, GP, uh, of the MP, uh, NTP server's con config, uh, uh, config file, yeah. And uh, here is the JDY, uh, uh, here we set up it as a JDY, uh, JDY bird and as its uh, clock reference. And uh, here is the screenshot. And uh, now we just uh, uh, set the uh, NTP server's IP address to the uh, NTP server that we just uh, set up. So uh, when we use the Wireshark to capture the uh, network traffic, as you can see, uh, in the reference ID is uh, JDY. So that means our uh, NTP server is now working. So let's can attack it. So as you we just introduced, uh, uh, now we need to do is control our JDY bird and send to the data and try to uh, make it to send out the signals and to in, uh, influence the uh, NTP server. So, uh, but, uh, what, uh, but the thing is that matters is can we inject any time? Remember, we just uh, uh, generate a GPS signal, and uh, we s we give him uh, a time that ahead about four thousand seconds. But uh, the thing is, the NTP server is just crashed. So uh, here is the thing: the NTP server, if you read the source code, and uh, we will notice that uh, uh, if the time uh, that uh, the NTP server just get from its from its uh, reference clock, and uh, the the distance is really really big, so the NTP server will just will crash and will panic, uh, and uh, uh, it's it's the limit. So what we need to do is just uh, uh, <coughs> the largest jitter time limits that we read uh, read the source code and we excise uh, and we find out it's four hours. And that means if you inject a, a time that is uh, ahead or, or behind the time that the NTP server really is, and uh, it, it's larger than the four hours, and they will be panicked. So what we need to do is just uh, to, uh, just, just to short the distance so it's not what we want, and uh, it's, uh, it's not whatever we want. So, but uh, when, after we tried uh, to, to try to inject one hour that behind, or you can say slower than a real time, but after that, the NTP server just closed close it, just lose it, lost its con connection, so why it is, uh, that means, actually, there is a lot of more limits in there. And we try to find out, and uh, we find out uh, the time offset is more than 1,000 times. So the server will shut down. 
it's not just four hours, and uh, it's uh, and the four hours is the first step, a uh, first limit. Then the next limit is one thousand times, uh, one thousand seconds. <coughs> That's the NDP implementation is really, really close, and uh, so. Now what we can do is what we can do is just uh, to make things uh, uh, make things slower because if you want to inject any time, what we need to do is try to uh, the, uh, that is the first time we inject a time that the offset is uh, not more than the 1,000 seconds, and such as we use the 900 seconds, and uh, after this after this uh, after this step effected. And we will, uh, we will inject another 900 seconds. So there's more and more, more and more, more and more. And uh, this is quite slow. <coughs> and uh, uh, there is a little bit more shortcomings that uh, is the root dispersion. And uh, if you if you tried this, if if you want to try this uh, uh, this exercise, uh, there is a lot of more uh, limits in there, uh, because uh, one way just to capture the tra uh, the network traffic, there is a root a root, uh, root dispersion in, in it. Uh, that is actually not a limit to, to the server; it's a limit to the client. The client will just uh, to uh, calculate the, uh, the difference between it, uh, the local time to the network time. So when, the, when it's, when it's uh, the, this distance is too large, and uh, the client will just close its uh, connection. So here is another limit. So if you want to, uh, what we solve this problem is just to make it more slower. And uh, uh, in our attack, uh, script and uh, we consider about uh, the uh, kernel pan uh, the the NTP server panic and uh, the uh, client closes connection and uh, uh, it's it, so after this our uh, our access will make the effect so if you guys want more details uh, uh, the the R uh, request for command uh, five nine o o five uh, it's just met the met this limit, and uh, if you want to know about a uh, lot more details, you can just read it. <coughs> so uh, here's our attack demo that uh, we uh, just to record. So. So as you can see, uh, this phone that is you, uh, we use, uh, we set up its uh, NTP server's IP address to the uh, server that we just set up. And uh, this clock, it means the real time. And uh, uh, it's not quite clear. But uh, uh, if, you, if you see uh, more close, uh, closer, and you can see the uh, the the numbers we just typed on the on, on the behind that means we just uh, we uh, what we do is now we uh, try to control the JDY bird and uh, met it to influence our uh, 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 our NTP server that is so if you can see in it and uh, it's th this time that we use is about uh, uh, Four o'clock that we uh, in the, in the afternoon. Sorry. Where is my mouse? <laughs> so here is the influence that uh, the real time is about uh, two o'clock, and uh, the influence time is about uh, three o'clock and a half, and. Uh, uh, we we now we try to control try to measure it. It's about four o'clock. So here is the this is the difference, and this is 
difficult things that uh, if we want to make things, ma ma we want to change the NTP server and uh, it will cost uh, so many times. And uh, uh, we just made this distance about uh, uh, one hour and uh, we just use about uh, 30 minutes to make it come true. <coughs> So uh, what, we, what I just introduced is just a prototype that I, just, uh, that I set up. But uh, in real time, uh, and maybe you guys want to ask, why not, why not just buy a, NT, a real NTP server and uh, just attack it so, and uh, record a demo? So uh, here is the thing. This NTP server is just so expensive, about $10,000 and uh, each, each machine. So if you guys know about uh, uh, some guys in this NTP server, uh, uh, NTP server company, and uh, you can tell them we, we, can, we are glad to offer the tech details and uh, tell them how to test, uh, retest their NTP server. So uh, uh, there is a lot of NTP servers company that um, met this. And uh, as you can see, we, can, we got the uh, as, as you can see, we got the, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Marineberg. Marineberg. Marineberg is a large company that made an uh, NTP server. And uh, such as small products and uh, the, yeah, here is the Think server and the S200. And all, all these tools are come from the uh, foreign company and uh, uh, the three is, is more. Sonoma is another. And uh, here is the uh, NTP server in China that we made. But, and uh, when we made conversa conversations with them, and uh, we, were, uh, we know a lot about things about uh, where they use this, where, uh, uh, where they use the NTP server, and uh, uh, how many people will really buy this NTP server and uh, where they want to put it, in, put it and uh, where they use it. And uh, after we, uh, uh, after we uh, made this conversation, and uh, we know a lot about, uh, uh, actually in China, as there is in prison, and uh, police station, and the bank, and uh, electronic system, they use such as these models. And uh, according to our tech, uh, uh, I was both in uh, tech, and uh, uh, <coughs> their engineer told us that, uh, seriously, their, their products cannot prevent from this uh, time spoofing. So maybe uh, we come close to, the, to this place, such as prison, such as bank, and uh, we made this attack, so this system, just, this system we were just crushed. And uh, after we Googled it, and uh, here is the another uh, real tech, maybe an example. Um, uh, there we just uh, uh, know it's about one guy. And last year, they, to uh, they just posted an art article about uh, their bank uh, NTP server and uh, told us uh, their NTP server, they don't know why, they just crashed. And uh, uh, this bank only used this one NTP server as the root NTP server. So after it crashed, their engineer has to you know, update the time manually, and uh, it's uh, almost a disaster. So uh, here is our reference and uh, our most uh, uh, thankful uh, the, the author is our, uh, is my colleague and uh, Toko Tuang, and uh, made a GPS spoofing and uh, uh, it's, and she made, made us, uh, made us work more easier than the user. And uh, uh, the GDY bird and the DCF 70, uh, 77, and uh, so that's, okay. That's, is the end of our uh, presentation. Thank you. So.
Do you guys got any problem? Any question? Thank you. No okay, gator. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. So you got further more questions? We have uh, the, the first page is our email address, so feel free to contact with us. No questions? Okay, thanks a lot for the talk. Thank you.